So we did the Beanfield and the Village uh, chapters, and so I'm Lindsay, and this is Brooke, and that's Avery. And so our picture right here is just um, an illustration of Thoreau, um, and he's using his like his um, his tools to just kind of like tend to his land, um, and it shows like his hard work and his dedication to the big land that he has and his uh, simplicity of his life. So some of the essential questions are how can like connectedness with nature affect your well-being, which goes hand in hand with like, the transcendental theme of how nature is a good thing. And then how does self-sufficiency feel rewarding? How does it feel rewarding to be self-reliant on yourself? What does the effect of nature have on Thoreau? Like how does he feel about like nature? And how does like it affect him as a person? Like how does nature benefit you? And how does living simply differ from living for personal gain? Okay, so um, the summary for the bean field is basically that he chose to plant beans for the ma majority of his time that he was there. He ended up planting seven miles of beans uh, in total, and he did this uh, to connect with nature himself, and then it also, in a way, cleanses his well-being um, because like, it led him to think of like the simple things in life. Um, Okay, so some key uh, points of the bean field in respect to transcendentalism would be self-reliancy, love of nature, optimism, and simplicity, which we'll go over in the quotes. And so basically, like, um, these, the main, like, uh, theme that it goes back to is, like, the feeling that you have when you studied so hard for a test and you finally get a good grade and you, like, really feel like you worked for that grade. And it's similar to his mindset to where he puts in all the work using old techniques in farming to put all the work into his beans, not necessarily for the own crop of it, but for the feeling that he gets of just accomplishing the task. And um, the picture right there is basically just uh, an illustration of what I was saying, of just how big it is and how he uses old techniques that aren't necessarily the most efficient, but he feels like he works really hard to do it, and it brings him a sense of joy and optimism, which relates to optimism. So, so real quick, um, one of the things that people often talk about with Thoreau is how, like, or one of the criticisms, like, oh, you know, it's like not working hard or just sort of like chilling in nature. Mm -hmm. What are, what would you say are Thoreau's views on work, on labor, and things like that? Thoreau considers like more like physical labor, like physically working for his things is like more of the hard work. He doesn't feel like using like modern technology and like machinery. He doesn't feel like that's like the like correct like work to do it. He thinks you're like taking the easy way out. You're not like actually experiencing what you're supposed to be experiencing. You're kind of just taking the easy way out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a quote that kind of pertains to that idea. Cool. Um, okay, so this is the first quote that we found and it says that they attached um, me to the earth and I got strength like Antaeus. So Antaeus is this Greek giant who um, was, as long as he was connected to the earth, he was like superhuman in strength. And the way that um, Hercules defeated and killed him was that he was like forced away from the earth. Um, and then, so Thoreau was like, um, he was comparing himself to that because as long as he was like connected with nature, he was stronger for it and he was better for it. And so it just led him to be like a happier, healthier life. Okay. Sometimes the man in the field heard more of the traveler's gossip and comment that it was meant for his ear. Being so late, pee is so late, for I continue to plant when others have begun to help. This goes about with individually nonconformity. He doesn't follow like the general guidelines when it comes to planting his beans because he does this at different times than everybody else. So when everybody else is doing something, he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go on my own schedule. I'm going to do what I think is right. I'm not going to conform to their expectations. I'm going to do what I feel is right for me. Okay, so this one says, but the labor of the hands, even when pursued to the verge of drudgery, is perhaps never the worst from idleness. And so, um, before we like uh, get into the deeper meaning of it, drudgery is like a dull and menial work, and idleness is like the laziness and like the inactivity. And so, basically, this refers to like the transcendentalist concepts of self-reliance and like the idea of hard work. Because when you're like using your self-reliance and only relying on yourself and hard like work, 
you're like you're truly like relying on yourself and you're um, you're feeling the reward like you're potential you're completely gaining from uh, the work that you have and it's like he's showing the importance of hard work when he says that like even when you feel like the work is getting hard and getting dull it's never um, as bad as like you're not being lazy you're still like working hard and you still have your beliefs at the end of the day and it, uh, it kind of keeps you from uh, this quote is like him saying it keeps you from giving up because he still has his beliefs at the end of the day his hard work and so that's what he wants real quick I want to